Hi. I decided instead of joyful crying, I would joyful jump. <laughs> That's better. Before I even start, thank you for having me. I wanted to recognize people in the crowd that I've known for 20 or more years being in this town. There are some women in this room, if you look around, that have persevered and struggled and fought and dreamt. You are with me. If you are a young person that is dreaming and fighting and persevering, please don't give up. Because my mother was a stable mom, she had to get a job. The story's not beautiful at all. It's actually not good. But that's not what my story is about. It started there because my grandma always watched sports. She watched every UCLA Bruin basketball game. She watched every UCLA Bruin football game. She watched the Dodgers, the Lakers, and sometimes the Kings. And I was with her all the time, and we had to watch all the sports with her. It was either that or go swimming. If we watched the game, we earned 20 minutes in the pool. And it was incredible. And there was a day, and I don't remember what it was, but she said to me, this is my favorite getaway from that difficult world outside. And I didn't really understand it. And I wrote the quote down years later. And then I realized that that quote was going to be so significant in my life. But more important was the conversation we had one day when we were watching a Dodger game, and I said, Grandma, why don't girls play these sports? And she says, well, they play some of the sports, but not with these people. These are the very good ones. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma Faye. And then I said, how do I get to do that? She said, I'm not really sure you can. But there was this guy early on in baseball in New York that was the first person with brown skin to play baseball. And she told me the story of Jackie Robinson. And from that moment on, in the early 70s, he became my Jesus. WWJD, what would Jackie do? <laughs> it's true. I still use it every day, every single day. And I decided that I was going to do what Jackie did for women, girls. I was gonna play baseball. So I went home to my mom after a babysitting day, grandma's, and I said, I want to play baseball. And she said, what did your grandmother tell you? <laughs> she told me about this man, I don't even remember his name, but he, he was the first person with brown skin to play baseball, and I want to be the first girl. And my mom looks at my brother, and looks at my sister, and she says, well then we're going to do that. And she marched down to West LA, Italy, and she fought, fought, fought to get her daughter to be one of the first two girls to play Little League in West LA. And my mom was really the catalyst then to instill in me to try new things. Laura Doney was the other girl. I like to say her name out loud because I hope she says mine. Because we were the two. We played on the Tigers. We sat on the bench together until about the eighth inning. And then we were winning in the last play. But it was the beginning, and then I wanted to be good at it, and I wanted to play where Jackie played, and I wanted to do everything that he did, and I wanted to own a coffee company, and I wanted to be the first one to start a church, I wanted to do all that stuff. Well, that dream was halted pretty early when I got to an age where girls weren't allowed to play baseball. And they said, we well, can play softball. And I said, did Jackie play softball? That's a different sport. No, Jackie didn't play softball. Well, then I don't want to play softball. And so what happened is I shifted into all the other sports. I played softball for a bit. It's a great sport. But at that time, it's not what Jackie did. So I didn't want to do that. So I decided, OK, as I got into trouble over and over again in junior high and high school for talking in class, I got kicked out of Hebrew schools and never had a lot of stuff because I couldn't stay in Hebrew schools because I was always talking in class. <laughs> so by the time I was 16, I decided I wanted to talk about sports. And I knew in high school, I played everything. I knew in high school that I wanted to talk about sports. And baseball was what Jackie did. So that was the sport that stayed in my heart. 
I'm that typical kid that would take the transistor radio into bed with her at night because bedtime was 7 30 and the games went on until like 9 30 or 10. I was the one with the transistor under the covers. But my grandma was the one during the World Series that got caught in the temple with. <laughs> In 1989, I've been at Cal Poly for 22 years, and all I've ever wanted to do was be, I'm sorry. <laughs> all I ever wanted to do was be a major league baseball stadium announcer. Time and time again, I've applied for jobs in sports radio and in baseball. Time and time again, I had objection letters to Mr. Silas because they didn't even listen to my tape or look at my resume. When I got smart enough later, I started putting Carol and CJ Silas on my resumes when it was okay to be a woman in my business. But it wasn't for most of my career. And then in the past few years, I've had chances. I went to Wrigley in Chicago, and I got to announce a simulated game. I did a job. I went to Truist Park in Atlanta, did a simulated game, and I did a job. I was a finalist for the Tampa Bay Rays. They took some audio tape of me and played it in the stadium, and I didn't get the job. And on March 18, 2024, the San Francisco Giants job opened up. And the last two months of my life have been the most invigorating, exhausting, joyful, scary, petrifying, hilarious, time of my life. It's like I just started dreaming, and I'm living in that moment. I did a game in March, I did three games in April, and I literally just came back from doing three games against the Rockies where your Giants swept Colorado. <laughs> and I am not done yet. I know I'm a Major League Baseball stadium announcer. I know that I have deserved it. I am worthy and I'm in this moment and I am enjoying every second. And this town has supported me and women in this town have been cheering for me, coming to games, rooting for me. And I promise you, I will go out there into the world of Major League Baseball and I will represent you with the highest honor. And I'm grateful that you chose me to come here and tell you my story. I apologize for the tears, but I don't because, my gosh, I've been dreaming of this for 50 years, and I'm here. <laughs>